Dear students, welcome to the online session on civil aviation requirements. Today, we will discuss about rules of the air, which comes under civil aviation requirements, section 9. Let us see how the application, compliance and responsibility is considered while following rules of the air. Application, these rules are applicable to all aircraft flying over Indian territory and aircraft bearing the Indian nationality and registration marks, wherever they may be, to the extent that they do not conflict with the rules published by the states having jurisdiction over the territory flown. Compliance the operation of an aircraft either in flight or on the movement area of an aerodrome shall be in compliance with the general rules and, in addition, when in flight, either with visual flight rules or instrument flight rules. Responsibility The pilot in command of the aircraft shall, whether manipulating the controls or not shall be responsible for the operation of aircraft in accordance with the rules of the air except that pilot in command may depart from these rules in circumstances that render such departure absolutely necessary in the interests of safety. In rules of the air, we will focus on three subtypes. General rules. Visual flight rules, VFR. Instrument flight rules, IFR. General rules. The general rules mainly focus on seven categories namely protection of persons and property lights to be displayed by aircraft simulated instrument flights operation and in vicinity of an aerodrome flight plans time ATC position reports and communication we will now look into each specific category and the rules related to that category what are the rules with regards to protection of persons and property Aircraft shall not be operated in negligent or reckless manner. Always maintain a minimum safe heights. Follow prescribed cruising levels. Nothing shall be dropped or sprayed from an aircraft except with a clearance from ATC. No aircraft shall be towed by another aircraft. No person shall, except in case of emergency descent by means of a parachute from an aircraft. No aircraft shall be flown acrobatically except under clearance, advice from Air Traffic Services Unit. No civil aircraft shall be flown in formations in India. None of these rules shall relieve pilot in command from the responsibility of taking such action to avoid, avert collision. Aircraft shall give way to other aircraft in case of emergency landing. Let us see what are the rules regarding lights to be displayed by the aircraft. From sunset to sunrise, or during any other period, all aircraft in flight shall display anti-collision lights to attract attention to the aircraft, navigation lights to indicate the relative path of the aircraft, all aircrafts moving on the movement area of an aerodrome shall display navigation lights to indicate their relative path and anti-collision lights to attract attention to the aircraft. All aircrafts on the movement area of an aerodrome whose engines are running shall display lights which indicate that fact. Now, the rules regarding flying a simulated instrument conditioned aircraft. Simulated instrument conditions occur when a pilot uses a view limiting device in an aircraft to prevent the pilot from seeing outside visual references. An aircraft shall not be flown under simulated instrument flight conditions unless fully functional dual controls are installed in the aircraft. A qualified pilot occupies a control seat to act as safety pilot for the person who is flying under simulated instrument conditions. What are the rules to be followed by aircrafts operating on and in the vicinity of any aerodrome? An aircraft operated on and in the vicinity of an aerodrome shall observe other aerodrome traffic for purpose of avoiding collision. Avoid the pattern of traffic formed by other aircraft in operations. When an aerodrome control tower is operational, pilot in command must maintain a continuous listening watch on appropriate radio frequency of aerodrome control tower and obtain appropriate visual signals radio signals prior to any maneuver associated with landing taxiing or takeoff the rules regarding flight plan 
all the information relative to an intended flight, or portion of a flight, to be provided to Air Traffic Services Unit shall be in the form of a flight plan. An operator, shall prior to departure ensure that the aircraft has an appropriate approval, and that all conditions applying to the approval are satisfied. Flight plans for intended flights shall be submitted to the appropriate ATS unit at least 60 minutes before departure. In all conditions, the flight plan must be complete and all information including all donate aerodromes should be listed. All changes to a flight plan must be reported as soon as practicable to the appropriate ATS unit. A report of arrival must be made at the earliest possible moment after landing to the appropriate ATS unit at arrival aerodrome. Time plays an important role in aviation, let us see how the rules for time are. Coordinate Universal Time UTC, shall be used. It shall be expressed in hours, minutes and when requires, seconds of the 24-hour day beginning at midnight. A time check shall be obtained prior to operating a controlled flight and at such other times during a flight as may be necessary. Air Traffic Services unit clocks and other time recording devices shall be checked as necessary to ensure correct time to within plus or minus 30 seconds of UTC. Whatever time is utilized in application of data link communications, it shall be accurate to within one second of UTC. Rules regarding ATC position reports and communications. ATC clearance must be obtained prior to operating a controlled flight by submitting a flight plan to ATC unit. An aircraft shall adhere to the current flight plan submitted, unless a request for change has been made and clearance obtained from appropriate ATC unit. Any deviations from the current flight plan shall be informed to ATC as soon as possible. A controlled flight shall report to the appropriate ATC, as soon as possible, the time and level of passing each designated compulsory reporting point. A controlled flight shall maintain continuous air ground communication and establish two-way communication as necessary, with appropriate ATS. Those are general flight rules discussed so far. Now, let's look into visual flight rules. VFR flights shall be flown in conditions of visibility, clear of clouds and with the surface in sight. Except when a clearance is obtained from an air traffic control, VFR flights shall not take off or land at an aerodrome within controlled zone, or enter aerodrome traffic zone. VFR flights shall be operated during the period from 20 minutes before sunrise and 20 minutes after sunset. Except when necessary for takeoff or landing. VFR flights shall not be flown over congested areas of city, towns or over an open-air assembly of persons at height less than 300 meters above highest obstacle within radius of 600 meters from aircraft, or elsewhere at a height less than 150 meters above ground or water. Coming to instrument flight rules. Aircraft shall be equipped with suitable instruments and with navigation equipment appropriate to the route to be flown. IFR flight shall be flown at a level which is not below the minimum flight altitude established by state whose territory is overflown. IFR flight shall maintain ground voice communication as necessary with air traffic service unit. IFR flights shall submit flight plans, and maintain two-way communication with ATS. This brings us to the end of this session on rules of air. In the next class, we shall discuss about signals. Distress signals, aerodrome traffic signals, visual ground signals, marshaling signals. See you then.